For the last problem in section 5.5, solving exponential and logarithmic equations, we're going to tackle this one, which is quite a bit harder than the rest in my opinion. The first thing that I'm going to do is show you some things that you can't do. One thing that is very tempting to do would be to take a natural log of both sides of the equation. The problem is we don't really have a very good way to simplify the left hand side. To simplify this left hand side here, we don't have any rules about things that are subtracted or added inside of logarithms. So this is not equal to the natural log of e to the x minus the natural log of 4. Um, that is not a true statement. And because that's not a true statement, this whole idea of taking the natural log of both sides of this equation really isn't going to work out very well. We could try to use a little bit of algebraic manipulation to move some terms around a little bit, but we're always going to run into the same problem, where we have two terms either added or subtracted inside of a logarithm, and we don't have any way to simplify that very well. So I'm just going to put a big X over this and say that technique, though it would make sense to try it out, doesn't actually work. Actually solving this equation is quite a bit more complicated. The first thing that we want to do is we want to add a 4e to the negative x to both sides of the equation so it is all on one side of the equation equal to 0. Now as a miniature hint, we're looking at three terms here set equal to 0, and it would be nice if we could make that into something that looks like a quadratic, and then maybe we could solve it. So without really any other guidance, what I'm going to do is take this last term and rewrite it. I'm going to recall that e to the negative x is the same as 1 over e to the x. Then recognizing that there is actually a denominator in this problem might prompt me to multiply both sides of this equation by that denominator to get rid of that denominator. If we do this, e to the x times e to the x is e to the x, that whole thing squared. So I'll just write it like that for now. e to the x times negative 4 is negative 4 e to the x. And on this last term, e to the x cancel in the numerator and the denominator, and we're left with a 4. On the right, 0 times anything is 0. And what you might just recognize now is that this equation does in fact have the form of a quadratic. If we call this e to the x, say, a u, then what we'd have is a u squared minus a 4u plus a 4, and I bet that equation we could solve. And this does in fact factor into a u minus 2 and a u minus 2 on the left. So we get one solution and it's u equals 2. Of course we just solved this equation for u, but we don't care about that variable. We want x. Given u equals 2, how can we actually solve for x? Well what we can do is we can substitute back in what u was down here. u was just e to the x. So we have e to the x equals 2, and that is the last equation we need to solve to get our final answer. To solve this equation, we're going to do a natural log of both sides. The reason we do a natural log of both sides is because that is a log base e. So this natural log and this e are going to cancel each other out, just leaving us with an x. And our final answer is going to be x equals the natural log of 2. Let's plug that in and see what we get. And oops, it looks like what we actually needed to enter was a decimal, rounded to three decimal places. So let's do that. I'm just going to type natural log of 2 into my calculator. And the answer we're actually looking for is 0 0.693. That's three decimal places. All right, good job. So that's going to do it for 5.5. I hope this helps you out.